Hello and welcome to Talking Wrestling with Pond Water Dave. My name is Justin Davis, and as always, I'm joined by the First Lady of the Arn Anderson Fan Club, Amy Vaughn, and of course, the namesake of this great show, Mr. Pond Water Dave Miller. What is up, everyone? Man, I'm just sitting here jamming out to our theme song. Me that too. Was put together, it's put together by the amazing JD Hoop. Uh, that guy, there's nothing he can't do. There's nothing he can't do. And uh, we're lucky he does it for us. <laughs> oh, blessed, blessed, blessed. He's so, and, and I tell, and I've said it to him before that he honestly has talent on loan from God himself. That guy is amazing. Well, How's everybody I, doing? The thing I loved about it was the video montage. We had a new video package there with Amy looking like Ricky Steamboat. <laughs> <in the ring. laughs> And uh, Chi Town Rumble <laughs> putting that yeah. together with Dave taking the chop from uh Camacho. I mean, we had some action footage in there, I like that. Well, I now my stuff was in there last week, but um, yeah. Amy, I got Amy added this week. And if you'd add, if you send me some kind of video, maybe you duty bopping your ass down the court, <laughs> screwing up a call, I'm sure there's, there's, plenty, too. there's oh. plenty of video of me doing. Uh, screwing something up on the basketball floor we could put up there. We need something like that. That would be kind of cool. Can I Can I do – I do want to say, I hate to kind of start off somber, but, you know, just want to uh, send out prayers to everyone affected in Baltimore. Like, yes. what an absolute oh, yeah. horrific situation. And, um, you know, I know they're still trying to locate people. I know they're – you know, they talk a little bit about – they were able to stop, you know, it's just an absolute terrible tragedy, you know, and uh, does it look like it, it, you know, I mean, it was an accident, basically, you know, lost power, try to get it back, whatever. But, you know, the, just watching that bridge go down is just shocking in a weird way. I mean, it just looked like it was like Legos, you know, like just the way it mm -hmm. collapsed. Yeah, mm. it was horrifying. It was a horrifying image. and. Thought, I mean, I know it sounds cliche, but thoughts and prayers out to all those people. I mean, we got wrestling family in France, uh, in, in Baltimore. So, you know, exactly. when was it? yeah, our friend Lindsay, the cupcake lady, uh, we were, oh, yeah. we were speaking with her this morning. Of course, she lives mm -hmm. not very far from where this took place. Um, her fiance um, takes this bridge every day to work, uh, or most days, I think. Luckily, he was not on it this morning when this happened, but. Yeah, it kind of hits close to home, absolutely. And it's a, it's really, you know, obviously the loss of life and and that terrible part to it. But also, it's going to screw up a lot. That's a major importing harbor for this country. Uh, a lot of like high end cars from Europe usually go into that port, and they can find new ports. But obviously, there's a bridge now out that people use every day. Um, it's going to be hard, and I we're praying for Baltimore. The one good thing about this, if there is anything, which there's not, but that bridge does have three levels. So the middle came out. So I'm hoping if they do just want to, you know, build that bridge back instead of completely new, that those two on the end kind of help make it quicker on the rebuild mm -hmm. and they can get that done a little quicker than they maybe think. But we mm -hmm. shall see. Prayers yeah, for both. It'll be a nightmare for those folks for a while. I mean, just logistically, because... I mean, you let the Mississippi River. I used to work across the bridge. I, I live, I live on the, the border of 
Mississippi and Louisiana. And I used to work across the bridge. And if that, if something happened and that bridge was shut down, I mean, it's, it's an hour out of the way mm -hmm. to go down mm -hmm. to the next way to cross. I mean, there's no easy way. Right. And then imagine everyone having to do that, yes. you know? So I'm sure that is going, like you said, life changing in multiple ways. And so we definitely yeah. want to, you know, definitely. send out, like you said, those uh, thoughts and prayers to everyone in Baltimore, everyone that was affected. Um, and we have them. Uh, we have, uh, I don't think he's here yet, though. Do you see our birthday boy? I haven't seen him in the chat, but we do want to wish our buddy Willie Buck, our good buddy, as he would say, Willie Buck, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Willie Buck. That's right. I want to know That's how old great Willie one. Buck is. Willie, when you get in here, we want to know how old you are. We do. And if Dave you know, has his, he's going to give you that many chops. None of his damn business. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll see if he comes in. So our guest, our guest tonight will be with us at the bottom of the hour. So we're going to kick things off tonight right out of the gate with. It's time for Amy's Trivia. I think you have the facts. Let's play and see. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, got a drink. Uh, we're going to continue our WrestleMania trivia, and this is probably, if I had to pick, this is definitely one of my top favorite WrestleManias. It is WrestleMania 4. Ooh, we saved the best for first this week, everybody. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> All righty. How many matches were on the card of WrestleMania 4? Mm, it, was a, it was a lot. 14, 15, or 16. You had this was the tournament WrestleMania, of course. Oh, the tournament makes a difference. Oh, mm -hmm. somebody won that year. Oh, <laughs> well, it's got me thinking, thinking, thinking <laughs> that it's gonna be C15. I'm gonna go with my boy Pete Rose. Uh-huh. 14, dig it. It was actually 16. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there were 11 tournament matches. There was a tag team championship match. There was the Intercontinental Championship match, a six man tag team match, a battle royal, and then one singles match for a total of 16. Wow. There it I is. Know. We started off hot, Dave. Hot. Yeah. All right, next question. Hey, but you brought up Pete Rose. Pete Rose cracked me up today this week because yeah. they, they asked him about what was going on with um I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher the guy's name, but Otani is that his name? Oh, oh the one Otani. that the one that gambled or whatever. Yeah, the interpreter Pete Rose goes, well, I don't know where I went wrong. If I'd have just had an interpreter, I'd been okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's right, Pete Rose. If you just had an interpreter. Uh, but unfortunately for him, he grew up in the city that he played. He didn't have to learn Cincinnati speak. He knew it already. <laughs> Cincinnati speak. TNA top ten rolling with us. Uh, got it. And uh, and Heather Whitley got it. So was she? No, she agreed with it. So had that with Heather. She's a very but smart, me, smart Justin, person. and Lance Peterson were wrong. <laughs> oh. Yes. Hey, you guys, you know, it's okay. Who won I'm the used, 20? You're you, yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Who won the 20 man battle royal that opened the show? I know this Bret Hart, Bad I News wish. Bear, a uh, Bad News Bear, Bad News <laughs> Brown, <laughs> Junkyard Dog, or Harley Race. Well, unfortunately, my hit man came in second that day, he should have won, but. In the process, he turned face as Bad News Brown, and he broke the trophy. Bad News Brown won. Or Bad Dave, News Bears, you, you call him. Justin <laughs> is absolutely right. Now that he explains it, I remember that, that he is correct. Yes, and pretty much everyone in the chat is saying, you all are all correct. Bad News Brown won. And as Justin explained, uh, Brett was a sore loser and tore up his trophy. <laughs> Brett's a sore loser, really? <laughs> But it, Brett, it turned to Brett face because he was against the bad guy now. So instead of being the bad guy with him. That's right. They teamed up to uh, Bad News 
Brown and Brett. Brett Hart tagged up together to get rid of Junkyard Dog. Yeah. And they did. And then bad news turned on Brett. Da -da -da. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Next question. What match on the card was the longest at 15 minutes? Mm. Was it Ro Jake Roberts and Rick Rude? Demolition versus Strike Force? The 20 man battle royal? Or Savage versus DiBiase? Excuse me. I'm going to go Savage. Royal. I'm going to go Savage DiBiase. You think Savage DiBiase? What did you say, Pond Water? Because it I'm was for the title. Royal. And you think it's the Battle Royal? If it was the longest match on the card, Lance Peterson and Heather Whitley um, and T. versus Strike Force. The actual match that was the longest on the card was Robert. Jake Roberts versus yeah. Rick Rude. I, that was the sneaky one for me. I I knew you were going to say that. It actually, it actually went to a time limit draw. Yep. Those guys work together in Texas that a little bit. That makes sense. That makes yep. a lot of sense. Yeah. All right. Next question. Out of the 16 matches, how many did not end with a person pinning their opponent? Meaning the <sighs> match did run out, disqualification. Okay. You know. I know Hogan got disqualified out of his match. That's why he wasn't in the tournament. So that's one. The And the Battle Royal would be two. Those are the only two I can think of offhand, but I'm sure there's a few more. So I'm going to go four. Well, then you had the, yeah, you had the time limit draw. Yeah. I'm going to say five. That's probably right. What is it, Amy? It was actually six. Six. <laughs> we First are on off, fire. That's okay. Um, Can we do some NWA trivia next week? <laughs> this I, is what I'm supposed to be good hey, at. Next week, next week's my birthday. Throw me a freaking bone, okay? But okay. WCCW defense, all the world way. World class trivia next week. This is supposed right. to be my wheelhouse, but in my defense, I haven't studied the match lengths at WrestleMania for in quite some time. We'll, we'll uh, bring Lance Peterson. We'll bring, bring Lance Peterson. We'll, we'll send him a link so he can play trivia. Me and Lance Peterson will do the hardest world class trivia that you can come up with. <laughs> oh, yay. That sounds like a blast, doesn't it? All right. Next question. I Well, kind of about that question. I thought that was really Lance interesting. Says, <laughs> <laughs> he needs a shirt, is what Lance needs over at jumpinthepond.com. There okay. you go. I just thought that was really interesting. I knew that they had 16 matches, but like you think about it, six, I mean, that's a quite a bit to be some kind of, you know, disqualification or count out, time yeah, limit draw. Yeah, especially in 1989 or eight, 88, and, I guess. Yeah. Bruce, and you hear Bruce talk about getting solid finishes on pay-per-view, so six is a really high number. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, let's see what, I mean, honestly, most of them came from, the tournament so i mean i'm assuming you know yeah morocco versus bravo one man gang versus bam yeah. bam hulk andre so most of those happen in the tournament in, yeah instead of instead of a way to get take heat or put heat on one of those losers they're just like let's just have them both lose right and, and i think oh go ahead i'm sorry justin no uh, go ahead i was just going to say and i think that helped on the time even though it was a very long yeah. pay-per-view you know, yeah. you get hit with the nightstick and you go on to the next round, you know, you do still need at least be able to perform. <laughs> and I don't know if this is a time where they still had angry ref or not. I forget. I, I forget the guy's name. He was an older Danny guy. Davis. No, this was like before him, like always refereed like a, up in Philadelphia in New York. And oh, I know who you're talking about. I always called him angry ref because he was always just looked like he's pissed off at the wrestlers the whole time. <laughs> But I, I, if he was in there, he would have been dumping people left and right for sure. <laughs> Out of the 14 participants in the WWF Heavyweight Championship title tournament, how many are not in the Hall of Fame? Do you have zero, two, four, or six? Okay. In the, in the W tournament, how many are not in the Hall of Fame? Man, I'd say all of them are. 
Of the 14 participants in the WWE Heavyweight Championship title dude. tournament, how many how many of their dads six. are not named Bob? I'm going to go six. I mean, I can't, it. It. I can't imagine. I can't imagine it. Amy, this question's harder than times were in 1929. Okay. Let me try to name some. Andre and Hogan were in this. They both got disqualified in their match, I think. So that's this, two. Macho Man. Macho Man would be three. Ted DiBiase is in the Hall of Fame, isn't he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Four. Um, so I'm I'm only missing two. Who else was in this? Uh, would Jake and Rick Rude been in this? They were. They went. Yes, they went to. Jake a is one. Girl. So I'm going to go six. So you think there are six not in the Hall of Fame? Is that what you're saying? Oh, I thought this was R in the Hall of Fame. I'm looking. How at many one. are not in the Hall of Fame? Oh. There are 14 participants. Oh, I was going to say, I'm going to go with my original answer then and say zero. You think they're all in the Hall of Fame? Yes. Pond Water, what do you think? I'm going to go B because the the chat the chat's going six. I mean C four, and um, I'm going to split the difference and say B two. Okay. The chat is correct. Heather's on fire. It is four. In now, man, that question is... was blue, blue chew infused. That's how hard that question was. Oh, yeah. now, now I'm how? trying to think of who the four would, that were in it would not be in. Well, yes. who can would you this name? Be? Can you name the four that mm-hmm. are not in the Hall of Fame? The Hall of I don't Fame. even know who's in the damn tournament. I don't Bad either. News Brown? Yeah, and he's not Bad in. Bad news, so that's Brown. One. That's no, one. he was not. Oh, he in was in the. He was in the Rumble. He was in the Battle Royal. Oh. Okay. Would you like me to tell you some of? The, let me see. Uh, how about I'm, the? How about the chat? Coco, uh, he wouldn't be in it. Coco Beware. I don't think. No. Bonus. Um, can you name them? Okay. But I think he's in the Hall of Fame. If you read the list down, I can tell you who's not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, we can do that. But so okay. I'm mad. I, mean, I don't like, know who's in the tournament. I'm mad that I can't think of who was in this damn tournament. 1988, 1988 WWE. <laughs> Just guess. Okay. Well, uh, you know, Lance Peterson has a good guess. One man gang. Uh, one man uh, gang or, is correct. That is yes. correct. One gang. They need to get that fixed. That's a travesty. Gang. The gang's not yeah. here. Yeah. One get ga- one. <laughs> one. Dino man Bravo. Gang. Okay, there's Dino, one Dino Bravo. Dino Bravo, correct. He is not in the Hall of Fame, and he was probably because of the way his life ended. Mm-hmm. Yes, he uh, uh, Dino Bravo wrestled Don Morocco. Just to let you know. Huh. Uh, Who else would be in this? Would Adrian Adonis be in this? No, he was not in it. He was already gone. It's another big uh, man, and it's yeah. the man who invented the internet. Oh, Al Gore? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, Don Morocco uh, is actually I'm, in. Yeah, he he's in, in the Hall of Fame. He yeah. is in the Hall he, of Fame. When they came back after being on a hiatus, like, I think it was, was it 2004? Uh, the Hall of Fame was on a hiatus for a while. Yeah. And yeah. when they came back, that's when, like, Greg Valentine got put yes, in. Don Bob Morocco. Morocco. And, you know, uh, um Superstar Billy Graham, like a whole list of people got put in. Oh, uh, King Kong Bundy. Uh, he was no, gone. he was but gone. It is, a, it is a big man. I know that's where I was going with that. I was trying to. Big John uh, Stewart. A, great, a big no. boss man's in the Hall of Fame, isn't he? Big boss man is in the Hall of Fame. Uh, this gentleman, Bam Bam Bigelow. Actually, Bam Bam Bigelow there it is. is. Is uh not in the Hall of Fame. And How he the has, hell is he not in the Hall of Fame? I don't know. They just haven't put them in yet. They need to next do that. week. Next week we're gonna do a show. That uh, omission uh, alone. That omission alone is proof that Vince McMahon deserves every bad thing happening to him right now. We're gonna. The do other person was Butch Reed. Reed. Didn't How's he, Butch yeah. Reed not in? He's over in Florida. He's in the Florida Hall of Fame, I think, but not in. Yeah. The, <laughs> Didn't he WWE. say he invented the internet, or was it? I think so. Well, that, I think Connor. No, he's that. um invented, invented Netflix. Oh, Netflix. Yeah. Okay, sorry, that was a bad clue. Next week, uh, we're going to do a whole hour on the top 10 people not in as me and Dave guess for 60 minutes until we so get to you, Besides Dino Bravo, which you know what? He had quite the career in Canada. I mean, you know, but uh, Dino yeah. Bravo. Dino Bravo like- got in trouble with the, the mob and they killed him. They executed yeah. him. 
Oh, well, yeah. Amy's I mean, like, Amy's like, you don't even go here, Dino Bravo. You got big in Canada. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I, t I totally agree with, you know, Bam Bam Bigelow. Oh. I actually, of the four, if I could only pick one, I think I would pick One Man Gang. Like, oh. as someone who deserves. Well, he's my sentimental favorite, but big Bam Bam Bigelow I, was yeah, big time in WWE. One, I mean, they had him in there with Lawrence B. Taylor. Yeah, no, that's one I, A, one B. I, I do agree with Amy, though. I think if I had to go one, I would pick One Man Gang first and then Bam Bam second. Just because of One Man Gang Super Over, main evented, I think, of WrestleMania. Or no, maybe not. But he was toward the top there, like WrestleMania 2. And and anyways, then he, then he became Akeem the African Dream. And that was fun. And but he also had a UF. Then he UF, went and got the U.S. Or, title. So, yeah, I think... He, where Bam Bam kind of went to Japan a lot more. One main game kind of was more known on TV over here throughout. The and house. he's the only living UWF champion remaining. UWF, that's what I was trying to spit out. You know, he did some more territorial work than Bam Bam. But again, I think both of them. If I yeah, only hell could of pick, a nice guy, hell of a nice guy. Yeah, still, still out there. You know, signing. Um, he's mm -hmm. is but is he the other one still alive? Is oh, you got to see him at an autograph show because he'll he'll either go one man gang work for you, or he'll or he'll put that dashiki on. <laughs> and those well, things aren't easy to put on and take off because they don't they do don't stretch. stretch. <laughs> and the other thing, I mean, impressive. I mean, both one man gang and Bam Bam have skull tattoos. Like that's mm -hmm. not an you know easy what? thing to sit for. You know who else has a skull tattoo? My barber. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I told him as soon as he got it, I'm like, "Holy hell, Bam Bam!" He's no like, kidding. I know. <laughs> it's like that. That takes a that takes some work. All right, next question. This is probably a, when uh, WrestleMania four was in '88, right? I believe yes. that's correct. I would have been twelve. I would have been three. Was, <laughs> shut up, Justin. No. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, this tournament and randy and olivia elizabeth are the reasons why wrestlemania 4 is one of my favorites but throughout the tournament randy and almost elizabeth, said olivia I thought, I, one of, I thought one of the cosby kids were at wrestlemania 4 <laughs> i'm like uh, my daughter olivia i guess she must be on my mind randy and elizabeth wore coordinated colors for every match yes can you name the four color schemes they wore <laughs> that night I know In one order of would be great, but if you can't, okay. that's okay. <laughs> can't remember the order. I know the blue and white robe because that is one of my favorite Macho Man robes of all time. I think that was one of them, blue and white. Huh? Blue. blue. Oh, great. Yeah. Hey, him. Great trivia question for the colorblind guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm over here looking for yeah. the audacity. Sorry. I think blue. I think orange. He had an no. orange and black one. No? Okay. No orange. Silver. <laughs> Silver and black? It was black, yes. Okay, black and silver, yeah. Yes. Okay, and then there was the blue one. Like, okay. Was there, what was the other two? I feel like there was something green. No. Okay. I'm Okay, I don't know. Okay, sorry. I got two. Water. I got two. I'm thinking. You got two. Yeah, okay. I, I could but, definitely remember the blue one and the black and silver thing. I remember those two. Yes, Andrew. Okay, so it, the color scheme was royal blue. Yeah. Then it was pink. Okay. Then it was black. Yeah. And then and they white. came out in white. So was you should white, have gotten at least black and white. Did the white have a blue trim on it? Maybe that's why I was when I was saying blue and white. I remember that there was like a... I don't know if it was white with blue trim or. I but believe anyways. so. I'd have. Yeah. Now, as soon as you say, now I'm like second guessing myself. Um, I do think so. I think he, I think his. Yeah. His because she wore, like she her dresses were all blue, all pink, yeah. all black, yeah. and then all white. He was definitely white, black. The the robe was black with the stars. I think it was white yes. and blue trim. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. But, but so that is your trivia. And we'd like to thank 4. we'd like to thank Magnum Unlubricated for sponsoring trivia. 
Oh, because because Amy, <laughs> Amy made it hurt. Amy made it hurt. I did not think so. That. I did not think that at all. But Good yeah. Lord, Amy. Really? You thought that was yeah. hard? Yeah. Well, you said. But, I, I mean, said at I'm... least you could make a guess. I mean, you could make a guess. I mean, I'll... I'm colorblind. I'll... I had to set that last one out. Like you, black and white. You could have guessed. You could have got. Could have got the black right. and white one. You should have gotten the black and white. Just saying. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'll try to well, make it a lot. I said easier. I wanted a, a free sample of our new sponsor, but I don't know what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> There's Willie Buck, the birthday Willie boy Buck. in the chat. Buck. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Willie! Giving him some nooks. Yes, happy birthday, Willie Buck, our good buddy. <laughs> Don't party too hard tonight, Willie Buck. He's pre-gaming his party with us. Nice. <laughs> we got the girls in the chat, too. I saw uh, Megan uh, Nelson was here. Megan Nelson showed up. And... Yep. Yeah. Um, who else? Heather Whitley. So, yeah, Lance Peterson. I'm not calling you a girl, Lance, but I think that's all of our girls. <laughs> uh, I do uh, like, speaking of girls, I do like your shirt. And Allison's in France, so I don't think she's going to stop down to listen to us tonight. No, but her her second half, Andrew, is here with us, along with Terry, of course. So thank you all for being in the chat. And we are getting ready to have our guest, which I am excited for, uh, Pondwater. Who do we have? You want to tell the people a little bit about this person? Well, yeah, uh, well, I was going to wait to introduce him, but oh, okay. there he is. All right, on time. There he is. Perfect timing. Man, you got you saw that coming, Justin. I felt it in my bones. Or something else. <laughs> hey, y'all are in for a treat tonight. Our guest tonight has wrestled all over the world. He is the former NWA World Light Heavyweight Champion. He's held titles. Too many, too numerous to mention. He's been in the. He's wrestled in WWE, AEW, Ring of Honor, New Japan Strong, and I could go the rest of the night and not be able to name off all the places he's appeared. Our, please welcome to the show, Mr. Barrett Brown. Barrett, how you doing? Man, I'm good. I don't know what to say after that intro, so I feel honored, and uh, thank you guys for having me. I think you should just go home after that, Barrett. I mean, right, we're good. Wrap it up. <laughs> and you're the current, the current. I'm gonna. I know that's why I didn't do it on the intro. A I W F. Correct. Yeah, I got the it. current A I W F cruiserweight champion. Yes, sir. What does A I F? What does that stand for? Where? Allied Independent Wrestling Federation. Gotcha. And so they have affiliates um, across different continents on the world and. Oh. So right now, you know, it's it's got the name World on the title, but it hasn't been defended overseas yet. But I'm going to change that in July. Oh, cool. Ooh, where are you going? I'm going to go out to the UK. At least that's the plan. I have defenses before then. So, but I don't plan on anyone else taking that opportunity away from me. So the plan right now is to go out to the UK and make it a world championship. Oh, yeah. how fun. This will be your second. That'll be your second trip over to the UK, won't it? It'll be my third. So I got to do uh, my first uh, little mini tour in 2018 and then again in 2019. And then, you know, I was going to go in 2020, but a little thing called COVID-19 happened. I didn't get to do anything really. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, so it's going to be good to go back out there and uh, get to do my thing back in the UK. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. So hopefully I'll get to get two shows out there this year and we'll see what happens. Nice. Cool. Y'all heard your here. What does your shirt say? Team what? Oh, uh, Team Fearless. Oh, what is that? So, so this is the team of uh, Lodi and Scotty Matthews. Oh, okay. And actually, I got to uh, join them, what was it, like late last year. And I officially became the third member of Team Fearless at a little show we did. Um, I don't even remember what town it was. It was like just a little bitty town. We did like a – I'm a part of a Christian wrestling group called the CWF, and we did a little – ministry show out in like this small town where the population was whoever's in your car basically and they all <laughs> gathered at this little uh little event and we just made some magic happen that night so, so yeah it was awesome good. that's what i love about the business you know like you get to go to these small towns and sometimes you don't know who's going to show up and then you know 
nothing's going on in the surrounding area. So you have like 400 people show up with nothing going on. So oh, yeah, like our upcoming match and uh, our upcoming matches in uh, for BIW and uh, Fountain Hill, Arkansas. Yeah, there'll be more people. There'll be more people in the gym than the whole town population. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Which That's gonna, gonna make be... you feel good that you can double the size of a town just by coming into it. I know, That's right? Nice. I don't. I don't remember the town's name, but it was for BIW. And I remember my first time going to this little venue in this little bitty town. It was more like a village, because when you turn right to enter the town there was a gas station, but it said mall on the front of it. And I was like, I get it. I understand. You know, I, that gas station probably loves it when you guys have a show in town. Right. They got no all the kidding. business. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> people got, Fountain Hill's people kind of that really way. Mall while they're there. I mean, how could right. you not get <laughs> Exactly. The Dollar General enjoys the boost in revenue when we, when we show up at Fountain Hill. No, no kidding. kidding. Hey, before we get into your wrestling, Barrett, let's talk about you're constantly pushing yourself physically. As a matter of fact, um, for a while there, the, everybody wanted to claim they were trained by Barrett Brown. Yeah. But you do these. <laughs> just I want to give you some context. This is this is my my Apple Watch. This is my Apple Watch when I feel like I and this is not for a day. What? Yeah. Oh. This okay. isn't a day. <laughs> like this is like me after I've had a hard week. <laughs> like this. This is my hard week. You know. 45.33 miles. It's very seldom. I might have I might have gone over 50 a couple of times. And one of those times was at Dis my week at Disney. Yeah. So that's that's my Apple Watch. And, and this is what Barrett does in a day. <laughs> <laughs> what were you yeah. doing to do I mean, was that? Was somebody chasing you? <laughs> <laughs> the women, so, the women um, chased them. So in that was <laughs> Yeah, so that was my 2024 uh, Stray Dog March. So it's become an annual thing. It started last year, and basically it was just because someone said that it couldn't be done, that I couldn't take 100,000 steps in 24 hours, and I made it a challenge to prove them wrong. And um, it just so happened that it happened right around the time that a lot of very personal like hardship happened. A very good friend of mine passed away due to epilepsy, I had two close losses in the family and just the month of March in general has become a very hard time for me and for my family. Mm -hmm. And so I made it an annual thing now, like this year it's more, it started to be about, you know, just my own way of remembering them and to like Aww. do something else in the month of March, just to like to have something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. But I also have um, a epilepsy group that I'm going to start partnering with. Hopefully, to kind of do some sponsorship stuff and to help support epilepsy awareness next year and do a, a walk with them every year. So that's kind of what it's become. But yeah, a hundred thousand steps in 24 hours. Um, it took, it took 18 and a half this year, but active was about 14 and a half hours, but it, it was just the most tedious thing in the world. It's more of a mental workout than physical. I'll tell you that. No kidding. Like, what do you yeah. do? Like, go like up a mountain and back or do you go somewhere like the mall and you just walk around yeah, there's like there's like a park down the road i can walk around i mean there's like a little driveway area i can walk around and it just happened that it rained on the day that i planned to do it so that was great oh. so yeah but it just wherever i could go i could i just walked and walked and walked and at about 6 30 p.m i hit a hundred thousand steps that day so, that so incredible i can't no wrap kidding. my brain around that me neither. I appreciate it. I appreciate that's, that's, it. I, um, outside of wrestling, I'm also a personal trainer. I, I just got back from one of my fitness classes, as a matter of fact. And my whole motto was that impossible doesn't exist. And I tried to instill that into some of my trainees and everything. So when I, if I'm going to talk the talk, I got to walk the walk. Literally got to walk the walk. Literally. So. <laughs> Have you done, did you do a, did you do a sit up challenge? Push up or challenge. Or a Hindu challenge. So, yeah, I, I did a push-up challenge, 5,000 in a day. And then I wanted to at least tie Jushin Liger's squat record. And his record was 5,000. And I hit 5,001. But now, <laughs> so now later this year, I found out, like, right when I was in the middle of the challenge, that apparently the dojo record was set by the great Muda. He did 7,000. <laughs> so now my goal now is to do 7,001 later this year. So... 
that took about two hours. And it's just that's that's almost as tedious as walking for an entire day because you're just in one spot. And if you go Facebook Live, by the way, and you play music, you get flagged. So I had no music to listen to doing it as well. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the worst. Uh, I, I was I gonna rep- <laughs> no, go ahead. I, mean, Dave. I feel the I feel the burn time in my shoes. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. My wife watches me get. I mean, I'll, I'll do my. I'll tie my shoes in the morning and then start breathing hard. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you though, man. Like I did it Thursday, then Friday I ate like a whole pizza, a package of Oreos by myself. I I treated myself Friday, man. I, I had would. nothing going on this weekend, no shows this weekend, so I just relaxed. So I think our problem is that we eat the pizza and Oreos without the workout, though. I think yeah. we've got <laughs> right. some backward stuff going on. I was going to say, we need to get Barrett to be our trainer, ours. And then he said <laughs> 7,000 squats, and I'm like, in two hours, I'm Barrett, like. Barrett would, Barrett would kill me. That's what I was going to say. Maybe maybe we shouldn't. That's not a, not a good you, idea. You should see me trying to, refer, trying to referee one of his matches when he's going to. He's got a match coming up against Steve Anthony. Yeah. Ooh, that'd and, be good. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna have to pack a lunch for that yeah. one. Yeah. You need to if, be doing uh, some squats, is what he said. In Barrett Fountain Hill, trained, Arkansas. If Barrett trained yeah. Dave, the show next week would be talking wrestling without Pond Water Dave. <laughs> <laughs> the eulogy of Pond Water Dave. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like this match right here is this one means a lot to me personally because. Mm-hmm. It's one that I never thought would happen again. Um, Steve is one of those guys that really should be worldwide. It's kind of a travesty that he's not. He's one of the guys that every so often I will get another match with him, and he was the guy that I got to test myself against to see how good I'd gotten up to that point. Uh And he's a guy that kind of took me under his wing for a bit. He took me – I mean, he used to be the head trainer at uh, Harley Race's school back in the day. Mm-hmm. And so he's now that he's back. I begged Josh. I begged him. I was like, man, if Steve is back, at least for a few matches, I have to have one of them. Well, look at there. Yeah, there's bald headed baby Barrett, not knowing what, what he's getting himself about into. 2015. Against. Yeah, man, that was yeah. That had to be 2015. Who are you and, wrestling? Uh, who is that? That's Steve Anthony. Oh, this is Steve Anthony. Also? That's Steve oh. Anthony. Okay, yeah. so you're going to wrestle him again. I'm sorry. Yes. I see. Yeah, that's that is crazy, man. Yeah, I don't have more hair than Barrett anymore. <laughs> the only this question I have, work, man. The only question yeah. I have: How in the heck did that kid in the orange get like Go Go Gadget stretch legs? Look at how long his legs look. Dude, that is wild. I didn't even see that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Josh had mentioned that you and Steve Anthony also had the only cage match in BIW history. I didn't realize that until he said it, but I guess I didn't realize true. that you'd had a cage match with him. Yeah, we had a cage match. Um, it was in, um, man, I can't, uh, West Monroe. It was in West Monroe. We had a cage match. I remember he, (laughs) I definitely bled that match. So we we went in. We went for about 30 minutes in a cage. My goodness, why were y'all hating on each other so much? For a cage match, what was going on? I don't even remember why we were mad at each other. There was something going on. I've I've slept since then. I've taken a few bumps since then, so I don't (laughs) know what was going on. But Well, I'm excited. I'm excited to referee it. So... I have to. Wa- I'll watch it after the after the fact. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be in go mode while it's going on, though. But I'm I telling it. you that. I mean, you're one of my favorite wrestlers ever. I, I love working with you, and I mean, I know, I, I know that I'm in for. I'm I'm going to be moving around a lot when you're in the ring, and <laughs> and Steve I Anthony agree. terrifies me when I referee for him. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen because the intensity. Yeah. He brings so, the best out of anyone he's in there with. And so I'm excited to see how he can level me up this time, man. So I always learn something from Steve. Well, let's go back to the beginning, Barrett. Yep. You started in 2010. I know you traveled all over the country learning as much as you possibly could. I just happened to be in Charlotte, North Carolina, going to um, NWA Legends. And I was just going to see the Legends. 
Yeah. And Barry, his family traveled to North Carolina because they had a, they had a, a, a camp, a wrestling yeah. camp. George South, um, was uh, yeah. I think Les that it, there too? yeah, Les was there. I think it was Tom Pritchard that put it on, but oh. he had a lot of guys that were with him. I remember Nigel McGinnis was there teaching us like technical stuff. We, I mean, we had a lot of guys show. I mean, we had a lot of guests show up too. Like, um, I can't remember who all showed up. I mean, we just, it was just well, like, there were so oh, many well, legends there in the yeah. building anyway. Yeah. hundred percent. What year but was this? 2013. Yeah. It was 13, 13 or 14. 14. Yeah. It was really right before I started to fully start hitting the road and like really start making a name for myself. Um, but I just I think it was was before so America impressed that he was putting in us. putting in the trip from Dallas to just to go to get that to get that training, you know. And so he was constantly learning. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, I mean, and I didn't want to just be you know known as the Texas kid. Like I wanted to really make a name and like get out there and spread around the country because I knew that I wanted to make a name for myself. And just in Texas was cool, but it wasn't what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I had to get out there and get in front of guys that were, that knew what they were doing, that had been up and down the roads that paved the way for me and ultimately get in there with guys that were better than me and knew more than I did so I could learn from them. And I was like, what better place than where all these legends are going to be at? Like, I'm going to go learn something. So that's what I did. It was tremendous. Did, uh, did you say your parents brought you? Like it was like yeah. the whole family came? Dude, oh, yeah. you have no idea how blessed I am with my support system. My, oh. my parents... They have always been fans of wrestling. And whenever I decided that that's what I wanted to do from the get go, the conversation was, if this is what you want to do, we will support you as long as you put your heart and your soul into it. And it's been ever since, ever since 2009, when I started training, they have been fully supportive of me. My mom, even a lot of the shows locally around here, she's the photographer to this day. They still go, my dad records. I'll get to watch film back. So I'm very, very blessed. That's awesome. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that. his mom will be at ringside. Uh, his mom actually is the one that took the picture. That of, one they uh, probably just showed, yeah. Uh, and uh, she took the picture of when I got to referee for Jack Stain as NWA World Champion. And I got to hold mm -hmm. the 10 pounds of gold over my head. Cool. And, uh, I mean, a lot of pictures that I've posted over the years were taken by Miss Stacy. His yeah. parents are the nicest people and they support him. I mean, they're road warriors. They yeah. they, travel, they travel with him. And you said they were uh, yeah. well, I mean, when I started like really, you know, flying out and get flown out for like New Japan and stuff, like they didn't get to go to all those shows. Sure. But you know, anytime that it's within driving distance or anything like that, they will make the trip, it was multiple hours or not. I mean, dude, we used to, you know, back whenever we would wrestle in Homa, that's an eight-hour trip one way for us on a Sunday. And they would still go to those and then come back, get home at like 3 a.m. and still go to work the next one. Like, so would I. But the fact that they were willing to do that as well, it's just, I, I can't be more blessed, man. Um, you said they were wrestling fans before you got into wrestling. What, yeah. <laughs> who were their favorites? What were they uh, kind of into? Man, my mom was a Von Eric nut, world class, everything, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Old school school yeah. Well, I know Old where they're Papa from. So there. that's what I mean. I mean. Yeah. I mean, you know, that we're from Texas, you know, it was always the free birds, the Von Eriks, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, nice. what, what was it for you, Barrett, though? Because that was all over with by the time that you, you were yeah. watching. I grew up with WCW on the TV. And I'm not going to lie, man. Growing up, Goldberg was my guy. He was my dude. I was like, I want to know, like, I want to feel that spectacle. Like him and that aura he presented, he filled the room up. And I was like, I want to know what that feels like. Like, that's the guy. And I want to know what it feels like to be that guy. And I don't know, man. It was just, like, really a passion and a fire that never died out. You know, they probably thought it was a phase, but it never it never left. And I was just a fan ever since. And I would say that once I started to figure things out, Shawn Michaels became my guy because of just his larger-than-life presence, how he controlled just his entire atmosphere. I was like... This guy is on a whole different level. And I want to know, you know, how that feels. And that it just again, you know, it never died. I've, very, I've very always good. said that I've always said that to me, 
Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels in ring were one and one A. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, in any given time, it's just. And and I and I know what you mean about Goldberg because it's not real popular to say anymore because Goldberg catches a lot of flack. Right. But when Goldberg shows up, even to this day, to me, it's still a big deal. Yeah, it's an event. It, you know, it's a spectacle. I, I mean, he sometimes the event might be that there might be an ambulance needed, but it is an event. Right? <laughs> I like how Barrett just turned complete heel on me and said, "My as a Bret Hart fan, my two favorite are Goldberg and Shawn Michaels." <laughs> right, as a Bret Hart fan, yeah. <laughs> we give him a hard time, but all, just all over anyway. the Them being Barrett's parents. I have a question. I watched yeah. one of your matches today. Um, yeah. Barrett, it was the four way, I think, last March, or at least, uh, looked like maybe it was a tag team, but everyone was kind of in the match at the same time. It was you okay. and K- Keita, I think is his name, K E I T A, Keita. I'm not sure. Oh, was this set of New Japan Strong? Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. that was that was a tag match. That was a tag, okay. Match. It was, a, I thought it was, but. It was like everyone was just going in and out and fighting. Yeah, together. yeah, we just went nuts. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, I was the question I had for you is, you took a very stiff chop right before you sold the finish in that match. That that chop looked like it would just, I don't know, shake your bones because it. Yeah. You took it like just square. You didn't move back or anything. Yeah. What is your biggest injury, or what kind of hurt the most in the ring for you so far? So. My biggest injury so far, um, I mean, I've had a few. I will say I've had about three major concussions so far. I had one that was bad enough. Um, It was in Austin, Texas, and a guy did a a move off the top rope, landed. I was on all fours. He landed up high, like on the base of my neck, and it drove my head into the mat. And I remember I finished the match. That was like one move left. And I remember I stiffed him back big time for that. But uh, finished the match. And I was so concussed that when I got to the locker room, so if you can visualize, like, let's say the bathroom is you know on this side of the room, right? And then there's a giant mirror on this side. In my vision, it was inverted. Everything was backwards. Oh my and goodness. I remember nobody in my phone contacts. I remember having none of the conversations. I just remember that my vision was completely like mirrored. And I was like, this is not good. <laughs> but I had, so that concussion, um, matter of fact, and this, I, we don't have heat for it, but Steve Anthony gave me a concussion at TCW back in the day. Um, stiff chair shot, which was probably my fault too. Um, and there was another well, one I can't At least remember. he wasn't laying it in like Hogan used to with the chair. Right. Um, <laughs> there was also uh, recently uh, my back got it, no, nothing very internal, thankfully. I was very worried about it. I was wrestling Brian Keith. And I took an exploder suplex into the turnbuckle while I was off center. And this is like for any young wrestlers listening to this make sure you have your fundamentals down and even like people that have been in for 15 years mess up sometimes. When I flipped to the turnbuckle, I was off center just like by a centimeter. And instead of hitting the pad, my lower back hit the bottom rope instead and bounced me back. And after the match, I had such a deep bruise in my lower back. It looked like I had a pull noodle in my back. And that, that was rough. No, because I had to wrestle the next weekend anyway. And I, you know, I'm the little guy I get thrown around. So I had to grip my teeth and, deal with it so yeah. thankfully nothing broken though that i can remember but nothing broken nothing crazy like that um it's just been i've been very knock on wood i've been very fortunate to not have anything broken yet so but did concussion you play, wise, did you I sports in like school was is it pretty were you athletic or, or was it all kind of brand new to you um, I mean, I played football and I did track and stuff like that, but I was never a full blown athlete as a kid. Um, I became very active because wrestling was becoming a possibility for me. It happened when I was like 14 years old. My mom just, she knew a guy that she graduated high school with that literally had a ring in his backyard down the road from where I grew up. And she, I've seen that ring. It's just sitting right out. It's outside. Yeah. 
and she when you drive down the highway, it's, it's there. I yeah. feel like their like like mom was a was manager there. or something at that range. I she, know. She little... <laughs> I feel like I want to meet Barrett's mom. I think she's like super cool. <laughs> right? The best. She is a four foot ten ball of fury. I will tell you that. She is seventh the personality. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's where it all started was in that little ring in the backyard. And then um, you know, the bare basics I was taught there, but from there I went to Killer Tim Brooks and Walks the and he really instilled and this is how I've always put it, like Killer Tim Brooks laid the foundation for me and then like New Japan Dojo training kind of built the tower on top of that foundation. So that's kind of how the hybrid style that I've adopted came to be. Killer laid the foundation, New Japan built the the tower on top of it. So I want to put my co-host oh. on the spot for a second. Do y'all know have any idea who Killer Tim Brooks was? I feel like you've told us. Like, didn't someone else get trained by him that we've had on? Well, here? I'm sure. Probably. I've, I feel like we've told us who Killer Tim Brooks is. Well, Killer also trained Keith Lee as well. <clears throat> he trained Keith Lee. He's trained quite a few people. Um, honestly, there's, I mean, I was there when Tim Storm came through his school and did some stuff there. There was just a lot of guys that came in and out of his school, whether it was to get fully trained or just to get like a little bit of advice from him. I saw a lot of guys come and go from Killer's school. So tell us, Dave, tell us more about Killer Tim. No, I was going to say, I want y'all to go look him up and, and see his body of work. <laughs> He's uh, rough, man. He's I mean, he was a villain, villain in Georgia. Yeah. Bon Eric nemesis. I mean, he went to, I mean, him and David went at it tooth and nail. Gary Hart was his manager. In fact, one of my favorite Gary Hart interviews has Killer Tim Brooks out on a motorcycle. And somebody yells at him and then Gary Hart turns around and says, Hey, bro, I'm over here working right now. I'll check you later. And it turns back around. <laughs> but because Killer Tim Brooks gets off his motorcycle, and starts wallowing around in the mud. It's just, but he was a, a, a biker gimmick with, uh -huh. the, with the cigar, the little thin cigar. And he was, he was a, I mean, when I, when I started going to matches in 82, whenever Killer Tim Brooks came out, he wasn't as physically intimidating as a lot of the wrestlers, but he looked he looked like he would kill you. Right. Like yeah. you don't, you're not going to mess with him. So he and was at the still, sportatorium? Is that, that what you're saying? That early biker image. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was at the sportatorium. Cool. And so even, your mom? Like, you know, Why even you toward wrestling? the end, like even at the end of his career and like when he was just doing training stuff, he still kept that dead look in his eyes. Mm -hmm. He was still the most intimidating man in the room, even mm -hmm. to the end. Yeah. So how did you end up going to his school? Your mom, um, she did it, didn't she? <laughs> well, I remember I was at a local show near uh, where I grew up, and I believe that someone that was either training with him or someone that knew him was at the show and said, we need to get Barrett over here to train with Killer. Oh, cool. And it was kind of that like i went to train with him it's kind of like a tryout and mm -hmm. he loved me he saw a lot of potential and it really instilled a lot of the still what i put into my matches today he was the one that really instilled like the concept of slow it down and take your time and enjoy the moments into my brain and i've there's so many of his philosophies i've adopted and i've never forgotten over the last 14 years so Did he did he encourage you to go to the dojo? Like, is that, or how did that well, happen? You going to New Japan, or how did that so work? He knew that my goals were to go international and that my goal was to go to New Japan Pro Wrestling. He knew that that was all that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just remember, and this is my one, I'm sorry if I get emotional about this, but this is the one thing that I hate is that I was this close to going to Japan and get to tell him that I got to go because every time I saw him, he got, he would ask me little big man. Have you been over to see, have you been over to the, over to Japan yet? And I said, I'm working on it. I said, I'm with new Japan killer, but I haven't been over there yet. And I didn't get to before he passed away. And that has eaten at me so much, but, um, but he knew that was my dream. And when I got to tell him that I was 
kind of doing stuff with New Japan Pro Wrestling. He was super happy about it, but just not getting to tell him that, hey, Killer, we did it. That just, that eats at me so much. But that pushes me further to make that happen and then get to go take a souvenir to his grave and say, we did it. There you go. Um, so the dojo it's happened. Coming. I feel because, like it's coming. Yeah. I mean, I'm working really hard to make it happen, so hopefully. But the dojo happened because um, when Katsuri Shibata, when he had to retire for a bit, he didn't want to step away from wrestling. He decided to move to the United States and to open up the Los Angeles dojo. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, I missed the first round of camps that they held because I did not know it was a thing. But when they brought it in for like the third camp, I went. And... I kept going back and kept going back because that was a style that I wanted to learn. And it got to the point to where I just kept improving, kept adopting their philosophies. And Shibata was like, in broken English, he was like, you uh, just no pay, just come train. <laughs> He's like, stay, stay at the house with us, food, everything. Okay. But just come train. And so I went to those dojo camps like 12 or 13 times would stay for a week with those guys would, you know, like stay in the house with them, eat with them, just break bread with them, go out with them, like whatever. And, and I was, I'm sober. I'm, I'm, I'm straight edge. So I was always the designated driver. I would be the one to get them out of trouble. Um, but it was always such a good time. And then it got to the point to where, you know, I would always hear like how good I was doing but in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, well, if I'm doing this good, how do I get on one of these shows? Mm -hmm. And so eventually, I also knew that um, there was a dojo in New Zealand. And so I texted Shibata, and I was like, Shibata-san, listen, um, I love the dojo. I love the camps. But if Fale Dojo in New Zealand is where I need to go to get booked, then I will. Just tell me what I need to do. He said, no, uh, wait until September. There will be a trial in L.A. Come to that. No Fale Dojo. I went to the trial in September, and I remember that Gato, who was the booker for New Japan, he was there. And Shibata told Gato, he was like, watch him. Watch this guy specifically. Watch him. And whenever we got done, I spoke with Rocky Romero, who took care of the American bookings for the shows in the States, and I said, what do I need to do? And he was like, you need to show up in Anaheim in December. He's like, you're booked. And then, then from there, it was the rest is history. Um, that was like, that was December 2019. I got to do two matches in Anaheim for Lions Break Project 2. And then COVID happened. And I was like, well, great. That was fun while it lasted, I guess, now that everything shut down. And then now here was kind of the eye opener for me because there was a moment where I almost stepped away from wrestling hmm. because wrestling had stopped. I opened my facility to the public and killer Tim Brooks passed away and it hurt me so bad for multiple reasons, but it was to the point to where I sat on this couch where I'm at now. I canceled the class that I had that day and I just had to have a talk with God. And I was like, listen, if I need to, stop wrestling and focus on training guys and carry the killer's legacy like that. That's what I'm going to do, but there's nothing going for me right now. And if I need to step away from in ring action, then I will. But if I need to stay, I need a sign like today mm -hmm. within two hours of that conversation, Rocky Romero called me and booked me at new Japan strong. Wow. Yeah. Well, and you told been, him you needed something today, know, so he delivered. Had, <laughs> yeah, and it had been over half a year since I'd heard anything from New Japan. And just randomly that day, two hours after that conversation, I got a phone call to you and I got booked and that, like three weeks later. What a blessing. Crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, that'd be the best Tim, thing we hear today. Tim may have been looking over you right there. We, we, I, I, told, I made that joke. I was like, Killer was like, you need to give this kid a shot, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Speaking of Killer Tim Brooks, Mark Dodd in our chat said that Killer yeah. Tim Brooks defeated Paul Orndorff for the national title in Georgia and then sold the belt to Larry Zabisco. It was a great angle in the 80s. 
I don't doubt that he was involved in an angle like that. That sounds just like Killer. I love it. I love it. I think Killer Tim Brooks was probably one of the first wrestlers that I saw when we got cable television, and I'd saw I'd see Georgia Championship Wrestling and realized that wrestlers that I saw on my channel in my town actually went to other places too. Yeah. Uh, the um, but the New Japan's not the only one that you've. You've got, you've you've had a relationship with WWE for a few years now, both in yeah. ring and backstage. Yeah, I I was fortunate enough to um, get the get the email. My first extra talent venture was in 2016 when I was still doing the Americos thing. Spoilers for all of you that do not know that I was Americos. I can say that freely now. Um, you know, it's funny. I I. I, I, I have avoided Americos early in your career because <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to. I was scared I to mention it. <laughs> I know it's all good. I it, it, yeah, Americos is. Well, yeah. Maybe our producer will pull up a, a, a picture of Americos. Oh man, that I dude. saw a match that you did. Um, I think it was 2018. Yeah. Um, a tag team match against what was their name? They had the one guy kind of managing them, like. AOP or AOP, yeah. yeah. So that was my second time out for um, extra talent stuff. No, that was my third. Okay, so the order was 2016. I did. Um, it was Americos versus Braun Strowman. Got absolutely manhandled. Obviously, um, it was a great experience. I remember um, Braun was extremely happy with it. Triple H shook my hand. Was very happy with it. Um, I did that. And then it was, I believe, 2017 or whatever year the Dudleys got inducted to the Hall of Fame. That was my second venture because I got put in the producer role to tell the Dudleys that they were going on too long and to wrap it up. And they put me through the table on the stage, which was still to this day one of the coolest moments of my entire career. Um, yeah. And then I mean, the reason I got put in the tag match with ALP was because, funny enough, the agent for that match was Devon. And when Devon looked at the extras, he was like, you went through the table. I was like, yeah, he was like, you're wrestling tonight. Come here. I was like, oh, let's go. <laughs> so so that's why I got the match with AOP um, along with Izzy James, who was going by Gregory James at the time. There's oh, America. look at that star spangled superhero. Look at that. He has the same tattoo as me. As me. Isn't, isn't that weird? He has the same tattoo yeah. as me. That, that's crazy. Um, if Devon got the table for you, you're working this did. match. Yeah, I felt so that. ridiculous after a long time not knowing who Americos was that it was Barrett. I never put it together. Man, I did a – there was a show that I did in San Antonio for Branded Outlaw, and a guy that I knew for years, um, he was in a like a cruiserweight ladder match against Americos and some other guys, and I showed up. He was like, oh, I didn't know you were on the show. I was like, yeah, I'm wrestling you. He was like, no, you're not. He's, and I was like, yes, you are. He was like – wait no way i was like yeah dude he was like no way it was like <laughs> two years since americos debuted i had no idea that i was americos but why, yeah, did, why did you become of... that like how did that come about yeah. so that came about because i was doing um some stuff for traditional championship wrestling based out of fort smith arkansas they had like a big tv production back in the day and i got booked just as, you know, bald-headed, clean-shaven, baby-faced Barrett Brown, I looked like I was 13 years old. And they wanted to push me. They wanted to put the junior heavyweight title on me. And it wasn't very believable for this kid that looked like he was 13 to beat up all these older guys. And they were like, hey, look, we have this idea for a masked character, a patriotic guy called Americos. If you can, like, drop a design, and we kind of want you to fill that role. And I did. This is what came out of the original design of Americos, and they pushed me to the moon on TV. It got seen by people. A lot of companies were like, we like this. We can use this on our product. It opened doors for me, and it served its purpose for a long time. I would say from about 20, into 2013 through roughly 2018, Americos had a good five-year run. And I hope, I hope you yeah. saved the – did you save the clothes? Hundred percent. Oh yeah. I was gonna say in like twenty oh, years, yeah. some guy with way too much money is gonna pay thirty thousand dollars for that. So just hold I on. Know, I, yeah, no, that yeah. I definitely kept all that stuff, man. 
did you wrestle as Barrett Brown and America? Like, were you still taking bookings? Both as people? Both. <laughs> you can ask Dave. He's ref my he's he's ref two of my matches in one night before. Me as bad guy Barrett and me as good guy America was twice on the same show. Yep. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you did that for Fuller, didn't you? I did that for Fuller as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because America has got to wrestle Charlie Haas back in the day. Yeah. So that that was fun. Yeah. It would have been fun if you would have got to do like the gimmick that Owen Hart did with the blue blazer when like someone somebody else was the was the gimmick sometimes and then you would be there and they're like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The funny thing is that the whole thing was supposed to be like a Dusty Rose Midnight Rider gimmick where everyone mm -hmm. was supposed to know that it was me because the whole idea was that the owner of the company hated me and put me in an impossible situation against Lance Archer. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, if you lose Barrett Brown, you're going to be fired from the company. And obviously Lance Archer destroyed little bitty Barrett Brown. But then a month later, they're talking about Barrett Brown, how he's gone. Lights go out, lights come up. There's this guy with the same tattoos, but in a mask that shows up. Well, that's not Barrett Brown. That's Americos. Yeah. <laughs> and for some reason, so many people had no idea that it was me. But that's wrestling, well, I guess. Since Americos is kind of, I guess, Lucha Libre. I was right. Sure. Um, <laughs> you grew up watching and you said... Uh, you didn't see that? it, Justin, but... Why did whatever I get balloons? You... I don't know. That's what I said. You did like that. I do again. Shoot balloons out of my fingers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a party for anyway, a second, man. I was uh, excited. What I'm saying is, you said you grew up watching Nitro. Yeah. Did uh, you enjoy every night, you know, starting this thing off with Eddie Guerrero versus, you know, Psychosis or something like that? Did, were you a fan of that style of watching it? Yeah. Yeah, I was. And the crazy thing is, like, you know, I, I vaguely remember being like very impressed with those but for some reason i was just always just enraptured yeah. with the aura of the bigger guys and i, I think I that that just goes way. to like yeah. my you know my young brain and just like just my imagination running wild with the spectacle of it like obviously now i appreciate what they did so much more than i did back wow. then and i think that that kind of goes to show why i am so much more of a showman now than i used to be and like I want to really evolve those imaginations of those kids because man, that's where the magic of this is. Is that yes. those kids are hundred yeah. percent. You, you know, the, the thing, I don't know if you were the same way. I didn't appreciate it as a kid either. And yeah. if they would start off with like, you know, Hoovy Juice versus Ray, I'm like, oh, this is a good time to see what WWE is starting off with. And then come I back know, right? with birds on there or something. Like that. And I'm, isn't it crazy like to think of think back like we did not appreciate these athletic showcases that are now, now being five star classics. classics that's what yeah. i want to watch is those matches well, exactly Ult yeah ultimo dragon is the one that hooked me in yeah ultimo dragon got me hooked into that but i was a huge fan of tiger mask in the 80s right i mean i could and when i because i got to actually see tiger mask yeah. and so when I saw Ultimo Dragon, I, it, it for some reason he resonated with me as a throwback to the kind of like Tiger Mask, yeah. and that kind of got me into appreciating the cruiserweights. Yeah, even though even though I liked the term light heavyweight better. Yeah, I hear that a lot. You know, I hear that light heavyweight is a better term than cruiserweight. All the light time. heavyweight, junior heavyweight. Yeah. I, 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 I cruiser don't even know what cruiser means. What is that? A cru I mean, I've never heard of a smaller person well, called a cruiser. Bishop said that. that he came up with cruiser weight to make to be different. I guess it's compared to cars, like a cruiser, so they're I smaller. Guess. Okay. But <laughs> I didn't. Eric Bischoff he, made that up. I didn't know that. Yeah, Bischoff rebranded rebranded the light heavyweight to cruiser weight. Yeah, that's what it was. The light. It was the light heavyweight when like Pillman and Ultimo and those guys were going on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, didn't we just get something about uh ask Eric anything? I think that maybe needs to be the question for him. Like, <laughs> where did Cruiserweight well, ask him from? about it? He take he'll tell you. Uh, oh, sure you he mentioned will. Lance Archer um totally beat the crap out of you. Yeah. Uh, so recently you got to re experience that from the murder hawk monster on AEW. Yep, hundred so, percent. How big how big of a thrill is it to get to work with Lance Archer with y'all's history on national television? 
phenomenal, man. Um, Lance is one of the genuinely most helpful and kindest guys that I have met in my time in the industry. Um, funny enough, I wish that I could have like projected on the screen at AW. Like I beat Lance Archer in Dallas, guys. Like you don't understand. <laughs> but uh, but no, I I could text him right now and he would reply within the next three minutes. I mean, he's he's never let any kind of fame or notoriety get to his head. He is still a humble person. Um, yeah, I don't know. He's just. He's also have he has no right to be as kind as he is, but he he still is. But he can still go out there and like absolutely throttle you, which I'm a I'm living proof of that. Um, I've seen him lose his temper. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I mean, mean, I've seen him lose his temper, but yeah, he's but, all I mean, business. But, but I'll echo everything you just said about him being a great guy. I owe everything that I, I owe everything that I get to do to him because that, he was my trainer. He's yeah. the one that pushed me towards refereeing. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny the way you said that. He was a no, smart I mean, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not because now I did suck. Make no bones about it. I did suck I just <laughs> love when, you said that. when I was training to wrestle. But uh, I think but, you could have no, killed I mean, a Goldberg gimmick. But no, his his as a trainer, it was hit on him to try to teach you maybe what your best path in the business is. Yeah. To to to, to earn money to make a living. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to be, you know, if you're doing it as a hobby, that's fine, no judgment, probably a hundred percent judgment. But, but it was that's he he was trying to give you the best path in the business, and when he realized that I wasn't 27 and that I was 42, he right. thought being a referee might be my better path in the business. Right, and I he's always he, straightforward and honest about it too. He will never BS you at all. Right, and. You know, that's that's that was he got me on the way, and 19 years later, I'm still blessed to be able to do this. Yeah, man. Thanks Sorry, to our Dave. people in the just... chat. Thanks to our people in the chat. We found out Eric Bischoff got cruiserweight from boxing. He is a boxing fan, probably a Joe Lewis fan, being from Detroit, and that's where cruiserweight came from was from boxing, Amy. So you don't oh, have yeah. to ask; you just answer the question. Yeah, I saw that Tim. Yeah, I saw that Tim had said that. You know, that makes sense. I'm sure he was looking at ways to make it maybe more legitimate. And so maybe adding a, you know, with WCW at that time, being at war with WWE, F, I guess, at that time, that uh, that makes sense that he would maybe pull something from uh, boxing. boxing yeah. So that's good to know. And I was just kidding you, Dave. But it was funny <laughs> the way you said it. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I've got, I mean, I've, I used to when we when we'd show up to train, I'd grab first thing I did is grab a trash can and got it close to the ring because it wasn't whether I if I was gonna throw up, I was gonna throw up. Right, right. So Barrett, what does 2024 look like for you? What you got going on? So I mean, I have some cool stuff going on. Nothing I mean, I'm going to the UK in July, so I'm excited about that. Um, nothing currently planned with New Japan right now. Um this year is mostly about me kind of practicing what I've been preaching to a lot of these guys. And really what I haven't been doing is to enjoy the journey. I think I've been so dead set on trying to get to a certain place that I haven't enjoyed it as much as I tell people that they should. And I'm taking my own advice, taking things day by day, just going to try and better myself every day. And whatever is going to come to me is going to come to me. And I'm just going to give my heart and my soul into anything that I do. This Saturday, I'm going to be up in Fort Worth wrestling a kid that's from up north, Robert Martyr, who is very intense. I can tell that he's hungry, and wrestling younger guys like that that are hungry like I am, I produce some of my best work doing that, and I'm excited about it. And otherwise, the next weekend, I'm not going to Philly this year. I'm going to be a fan and enjoy WrestleMania this year because I'm going to take a break, eat some bad food, and enjoy WrestleMania and be a fan for once. And anyone else out there, like, yep, that's it. That's the Saturday. Oh, so, cool. at a very cool venue too. If you're in Fort Worth this weekend, I yeah. urge you to go to the Ridgely Theater. Ridgely, yeah. have you said? Yeah, the Ridgely is phenomenal, man. They they have been very accommodating to us. And when you walk into that theater, it feels like it has a big fight feel vibe to it. Um, it's I can't speak highly enough about the Ridgely. I mean, you know, Fuller, 
used to run there back in the day as well. Every so often, the, the parade of champions was there. Yes, and yeah. then uh, I got a couple years wrestle. ago that Hall of Fame. Yeah, WrestleMania weekend. The, that other WrestleMania weekend, he had a big show, a regular show, a hardcore show in his Hall of Fame, and I, I was fortunate enough to be a part of that and. I got to referee the main event that night, and it was Aaron Eagle, who I hadn't seen in years. Yeah. Uh, don't say him. Let's not talk <laughs> about Aaron. He didn't win either. I didn't rub it in. I haven't rubbed it in that he got beat. Oh. I've been very nice about that. Here comes he Hill Manager me, Amy. I was going to say, oh. even though he called me stupid, but that's okay. Apparently, I'm not that damn stupid. Anyway, no. <laughs> Anywho. It's gonna be a new shirt. I ain't that damn stupid. <laughs> It'll sell. <laughs> it will. See, do you see my shirt? Dave has the my first yeah. shirt. Tucked her up a hole. Yeah, because <laughs> she said to me, and she was wrong, and did never apologized. But I'm not going to. So <laughs> we're just gonna move on. I would favor if she apologized now. She, anyway, Barrett. But it's the way you said it to me. You would go. I'll give you 30 I, minutes, I was, to, you know. I, it was confident. Yeah. It give was. you a background on it. We were talking. I don't even remember what we were talking about now, but I was so confident that I told her that if this isn't how it is, yeah. I'll kiss your butt in the middle of the road and give you 20 minutes to draw a crowd. So she said, pucker up, asshole. Well, I mean, what would you do <laughs> if someone said that to and you? And it was 100% wrong. wrong and I'm never awesome. back down. No. <laughs> <laughs> My mom and dad didn't raise no, no. <laughs> I was I didn't. And now I have a shirt. And it's the highest selling shirt we got. Yeah, it, it actually is. Shout out to your dad for that huge order. Yeah, my mom, my mom and my sisters and I all bought a shirt. <laughs> and you can get and yours too at jumpinthepond.com. Yes, Jump yes. Jumpinthepond.com. For all your pond water, Dave. Shirt sure needs. That's right. Yes, you know, Barrett, Mark Dodd is with Primetime Wrestling in Georgia. Uh, he's the one that gave us the little nugget about uh, Killer Tim Brooks defeating Paul Orndorff. Okay. I awesome. mean, they're a great organization. And, uh, however, Adam Jacobs and his tag team partner got beat for their titles. I'm not sure how that happened i think it's because i wasn't there to manage probably them. but that's okay <laughs> they lost their tag team titles but they've got quite the little uh promotion going and oh that'd be great you need to have you ever been to georgia uh, a long like time ago wrestle? a long time ago but i mean i'd love to go back well so. mark is inviting you that's awesome reach out mark <laughs> sweet yeah I'm sure you work out. Barrett brown's on your show it's better yeah, i appreciate you man i appreciate you man. I know you work today. We're not going to keep you any longer. I appreciate all the time that you gave us tonight. Of course. I, no, I, feel, it's like, been great. I, I feel like we can go another hour. We're just barely scratch the surface. Yeah, I know it, man. Yeah. I mean, I've, I just, overall, I've been very blessed with a career to do what I love to do really more than an introverted kid from a little bitty town in Texas should have any right to do. Um, I've got to wrestle a lot of people that I get, got to watch on TV. A lot of people that I idolize, um, if you want to watch any match of mine, um, I am very, very, very proud of my match against Minoru Suzuki that happened mm -hmm. in 2022. Um, that is the match that really leveled me up. Um, I'm going to watch one match. If you got like 30 minutes to spare, go watch Barry Brown versus Minoru Suzuki. Um, I don't know if it's going to be, I don't know if it's on YouTube, but I did wrestle That's Bob. I was going to ask if it was on. So me and Bob Orton was a lot of fun too. Bald had a baby bear. I got to wrestle a dream against Randy Orton's dad. Yeah. But really? just, you know, cool. it's, you that know, that match against I, Suzuki was at midnight on a midnight show, wasn't it? So, yeah. So here's what's crazy. Hot gun Saturday that, night. Yeah. No, that it was after, was midnight, after WrestleMania. Yeah. That was midnight after WrestleMania Sunday. And we were the main event. So we wrestled at about 3 a.m. Oh my god! And Suzuki still wanted to go in, like he still wanted to go. He didn't care like, what. Dude. It, it was it was six p.m. in Japan. He was no. Fine. That's what I was saying. I was like, he's on the Tokyo time, bro. He's ready to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need to we need to start a Suzuki versus Barrett Brown on AEW thread. Man. 
everybody tag Tony Khan, Barrett Brown versus Suzuki, Dynamite, Collision, Rampage, whatever match, because he brought he brings Suzuki in. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It would be tremendous. And and Tony Khan is well aware of who, who Barrett Brown is because he had him in there against Wardlow a few weeks ago. Yeah. I've done. Ooh, what was, what was that was like? It? No. Three or four <laughs> stitches in his eye. Yeah. That's what it was like. Well, that... I mean, if we're going to plug it, let's just. There's well, hello, cat. kitty cat. <laughs> we had there's a run in. Yeah. There's the, the run in. got excited yeah. about Barrett being on AEW against Suzuki. <laughs> No, that he got excited about the name Wardlow. Is it a girl? No, I will say the one Cat's match I haven't gotten, I haven't gotten yet, and now that it's a possibility, if we're going to talk dream matches, Suzuki was a dream, but Katsuri Shibata, my somewhat sensei from the dojo, he is my ultimate dream match. So, Ooh. hey Tony, I love to do business with you. I like it. There you have it. We're making that things will, happen. That will be a, that will be a clip, and I will tag him. Come on, <laughs> we're gonna speak speak it into existence. That's right. We can do that. We can do that. Well, I mean, and I'm not and I'm not disparaging Tony when I say this. Tony's a wrestling fan. It's something that he would want to yeah. see. Oh yeah, yeah. We just gotta I, make him know that he wants to see it. Yeah, and I will say so before we start to wind this up. I will tell you one of my. One of my coolest wrestling stories that I have. And this was backstage in Vegas at one of the CAC events. Now, Steve Anthony this night won the NWA World Junior title from Jushin Thunder Liger. After the match, Harley Race went backstage again because Steve used to be the trainer at his school. Harley Race goes backstage to talk to Steve after winning the title. So Jushin Liger is doing press against the wall, way against this hallway wall, like pictures taken and stuff. Well, Harley Race is getting wheel, wheelchaired in on this side. I legitimately, I watch Jushin Liger look across the room, move the press and dead sprint up to Harley mm -hmm. Race and go, Miss Sutter Race, please uh, picture if okay with me. I just saw Jushin Liger mark out for Harley Race. That's the coolest <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my mm -hmm. life. That was like the coolest thing. Nothing wrong with it. That's I know it. I think your cat is about to Harley race that picture on the wall. Dude, he's wanting all kinds of attention, man. Yeah, he <laughs> is. Uh, I haven't been home for like eight hours, so he's feeling it. He's I, got a a dog. He's I got a wiener dog that's doing that on the back of my couches all the time now. Yeah. He thinks he's a cat. Yeah, he's having he a full Broadway with that picture up there on the wall. He don't like that. <laughs> yeah, Merck is a, a Merck is a little celebrity on my social media page. Everyone wants to see clips of him so anyone that's watching this is gonna be really happy that he's made an appearance on this we're gonna have to put a clip on our uh feed dave of the cat <laughs> you probably oh, really why don't you tell us your social so that we can make sure we make more fans out of what's his so, name merc merc yeah merc m-e-r-c that's little merc um i'll plug the website because it has all that info on there so www.barrettbrownpro.com it's got all my social media links it's got my uh, big old written up bio. It's got a store page with some merchandise I'm selling on there. I also got some some blogs I wrote back in the day and some vlogs I put up. Uh, there it is. Yep, that's got all my socials, everything on there. So, and I do try to keep um, the uh, current events updated on there as well, where you can find me. So go there, check it out. I love to connect with you and uh, go follow me on. It's not Twitter anymore. It's X or whatever we X. call it. You go, you go follow me on the social medias and all that stuff. And um, yeah, just stay updated with me. Sounds and awesome. Watch him on Facebook when he's doing his physical stuff and makes you feel real guilty about that pint of ice cream that you're eating while you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> that you ate just the other day. What was it? Gooey. Gooey, the... gooey butter cake bluebell. Yo, yeah, I saw that. Is it good? It's excellent. Is it okay? Excellent. Barrett it's, saw it. Next, next and, and eat it. It's it's rich because it's taking me longer to eat this I'm half gonna, gallon than it normally takes me. I'm gonna be eating that while I watch Cody and Roman next Sunday. So who do you? Okay, yeah. so what do you think? Does Cody finish the story, Barrett? I think so. Yeah, especially after that beat down last night. Like, come on, <laughs> right? That's yeah, I don't like. I literally don't have cable anymore, but I keep up with it on like social media. Mm -hmm. I uh. I don't know. I feel like they're going to finish the story. Yeah. My, my only thing is like when you finish the story, 
what's the next story? Well, I think you have to because if we go n another year of this story, people don't want to know the end of the story. <laughs> They're just going to be like, it's and so I, I'll, more be, in peace. <laughs> I'll be honest, like in my own head, because I am a story writer at certain shows in Texas, my thought process automatically goes, we need Cody and Randy for the next story because that writes itself. But you, yeah. you know what? You know what I think it is? And I have said this actually since before the rumble last year when he won and I thought he was going to win at that mania. I, but I, I even think it more now. I think the intercontinental champion Gunter is the guy that they put him in a program with next. You have the American dream versus the German type of, I can see that easily. Yeah. yeah. And I've always been, I mean, I was a huge fan of Walter. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah. So I can see it easily. I've, I've, I've been an ad. I, I thought that, I thought all along that Cody shouldn't have been the guy to end Roman, that it should have been Gunther. And Gunther had his moment with the Intercontinental title and the world title. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, that's how I think so much of Gunther. Yeah. Um, I love Cody Rhodes, though. And I and I, and I, I think Cody Rhodes would be a much better heel. He's Homelander. He's a, Don't I don't let know that if Homelander with the boys. go. <laughs> He's, I mean, he, he wears Homelander gear. Yeah. He he's a great heel, but I've witnessed him with children, and he is he is the next. I mean, he's new. He's the new John Cena with those kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. people do not want to boo Cody. I just don't think it'll ever happen again. He's no, just, I don't either. I don't think, and I and I don't think they should. And if they do, it's oh. going to be so good if he does, because then you go sell his kids crying. And hey. Yeah. Barrett, Barrett I, knows when when you make a kid cry. I mean, oh yeah, I think the only way he'll become, crying. I think the only way he'll become a full blown heel is if he really dives into being like a full blown politician because he's very good at that. Yes, and but I I've seen, see, but I see it, it with the kids. Oh yeah, he's so special with the kids that there's no yeah. way. And yeah, and I think he finishes the story. And yeah. I'm concerned, like you, what are they going to do after that? And I'm not going to name names and go through a whole list of them. But too often we see the story finish for other guys that finally climb the mountain and become the champion. Yeah. Then they don't know what to do with them and they lose their luster. And then they're, then they're lost. And it's hard to get that back after they – I mean, yes. I'll go back to the 80s. They put the title on Ronnie Garvin and, and killed him. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't let him yeah. defend it. He just sat on it. And it made no sense that why wouldn't you keep him – all the guys that didn't get shots against Flair should have been Garvin should have been mowing them down on the way to the rematch. But for some reason they made him champion and did nothing and it and it it made it really bad. And to me, I'm hoping that they and, and I'm excited and I have confidence they can because I think the product that they're putting on television is better than it's been in 20 years. Mm -hmm. Not since the attitude era have we seen from top to bottom on the show. Even a show that wasn't so wrestling, like last night, it was more promo focused than than wrestling. But they did so much business that way that it yeah. it, it it excites you to actually to, to take that time out on a three hour show to watch it. Yeah, it was still entertaining right. too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And now you've actually given a reason for him and Rock to have to wrestle in some, you know, some way down the road. Yeah. You know, like I, I, I like what they did there is they kind of took those, what do you call them, theatrical matches that they did, like with Undertaker and uh, and AJ, AJ and, and and they're putting that. It wasn't a theatrical match, but it was a theatrical spot, and they're putting mm -hmm. they're sticking those in Raw. So instead of the Rock yeah. having to wrestle, we can do that. Anyway, you should join Thank us. We're going to be having a watch along, Barrett. You could, uh, you could or a recap. You should, yeah, why well, watch it on the big too. screen when you can watch it in one of these little squares? <laughs> no, that, I was just saying he could let us know his feelings. <laughs> oh, but thank you so much, Barrett. Um, uh, yeah. safe travels this weekend. We'll see you at the end of April up in Arkansas. Perfect. I appreciate your time. If you ever want to come in and plug anything, the door is always open for you. Hope you'll come back again. Awesome. It was a I'm blast, sure, guys. I'm sure, I'm sure by the end of this year there'll be there'll be a lot, there'll be a lot more stories that we want to hear. Well, I'm hoping so, man. Hoping I can tell some, you know, more memorable stories and 
hopefully I won't just be on the indies by that time. So we'll see what happens. Can't wait. So, we appreciate your time. We'll appreciate be rooting you for you. Take care. You. Love you, buddy. I'll see you. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Barrett Brown. Yay. I'm super excited for him. Oh, he's great. I can't wait. Yeah. Like Look, you we're said, we're going to be seeing more of him. Heck yeah. I'm glad he brought up the Suzuki match because I was ready to interject it a little bit before when we were talking about Shibata. And we kind of got sidetracked and I couldn't get in it. But I'm glad he brought it up because it's a heck of a match. And he said it it is on YouTube or he said or he said it wasn't. What did he say? Oh, no, he, he said, said there was a the one was, but the last one he was talking about was not. Or he wasn't that's sure. Right. That's right. That's right. So yeah. And I'm glad you're going to do that and tag them. There's oh, the good. there it is. Fabulous. I should have we'll known that up for a minute because would be on it. If um if um if you if you would uh tip, would you put that in the um in the chat? It'll hyperlink in the chat, and anybody that's actually looking in the chat can get to catch that link. And uh we'll try to get that out on our socials. Uh Again, I want to thank the audience that's with us tonight. Uh, Justin Yip. Justin Yip's in there. Andrew Hermes is in there. Of course, the birthday boy, Willie Buck. Lance Peterson. You can catch Lance Peterson on the World Class Cast. Uh, you, can catch, uh, you can catch Justin Yip uh, shortly, uh, but it'll be on Patreon. We're, we're, we're excited that we're a part of a – we're going to become – in April, we're going to become part of a Patreon. That will not change this content that you're currently watching now. Our Patreon will be 100% bonus content um, uh, for Justin Yent. This Just In Wrestling. This Just In Wrestling podcast is going to be a part of that. Uh, you can follow what's going on with him on Twitter at – this just doesn't have my glasses on and I can't read it. <laughs> this just in wrestle. This no, 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 just in wrestle. <laughs> At just in wrestle. Get it, Justin. It's his name, Justin. Justin Wrestle. I got it as I was explaining that. <laughs> uh, just like Palmwater was saying, it's not. We are still going to be live with you all every Tuesday with fabulous guests, but we do want to encourage you all to go over, sign up for the Patreon, because we're going to be doing a lot of bonus content that you will want to be part of and you'll want to see, and lots of different collaborations between uh, different groups, uh, T or TNA Top 10, they're in our chat right now. They talk a lot of football, wrestling. They do a lot of top 10 lists. We have quite the fun uh, when they put out a new top 10 list for us to rank. And it's really, you can tell ages on some people of how they uh, <laughs> rank different uh, TV shows and serials. That was a fun one. Uh, some different things that they've done. Yeah, Amy and took a lot of heat on her cereal choice. <laughs> yeah, and I, did, I didn't even make it. I mean, I do like raisin bread, but I did not make it number one. I don't know who did, but you know, I got blamed well, for that. Probably so you can up here. You can find the TNA top ten uh, wherever you you know at Apple, Spotify, wherever you steal your podcasts. Uh, they're talking of man. I'm a elderly. We're talking about busted brackets this week, and then they have a top 10 of sitcoms. And you might say, if you've been listening to them, you know they already did a top 10 of sitcoms, but this is the top 10 of the sitcoms that Terry didn't forget. The, <laughs> like, no, the he big, did forget. like the Big Bang Theory. Yeah. <laughs> and he still forgot Step by Step. So And Two know. and a Half <laughs> Men. Step by Step. <laughs> step, by so, step day but by I mean, day. those are our friends, and you can catch that episode now on Apple. We're also uh, uh, we're also partnering with the Filter Free Podcast. Uh, Dave, Timmy, and uh, TJ do a great job. Uh, this week's episode is uh, March of 1996. When I say March of 1996, it's because they will cover the pop culture, the sports, and then it ties back around into wrestling, which will have which will be WrestleMania 12. So, yes, you know, to. What dropped today was their watch along of WrestleMania 12. They also drop on Tuesday. So they drop Tuesday morning. 
you listen to them, then you all could come see us on Tuesday nights. There you go. <laughs> and then we'll all be together. We'll all be together on the Ram Sports Network, which is Ram is is for wrestling and more. And there's gonna be a lot of more. Maybe more, more than you want. <laughs> my personal my personal passion project is gonna be an audience with the belt pope. I think that's going to be where so I will take cool one res- one wrestling belt and I will and we'll, we'll we'll look at it. We'll talk about it, the significance that it might that it that it might have to me, um, because those that listen know that I'm a belt collector. I mean, you can see them, and the good news is I got seventy six of them, so we we got a lot of content. Definitely, and if, and if we can get through all seventy six of them, and I don't do repeats because I forgot I already did it. I got friends with some pretty cool belts, and I might just borrow one of theirs. And never top top ten you drop today is that normal? You drop on Tuesdays? I thought y'all did Mondays. No, I'm well, sorry. I'm looking in the chat, they said we dropped today too. I didn't know they real. I didn't realize they dropped on Tuesdays. I apologize. We all are just going to bombard you on a Tuesday, so I'll give you plenty <laughs> of things to listen to. <laughs> We've got some fun guests coming up. We're we pretty much got April lined out. Next week, um, next week we will not be having a guest. We are going to do our WrestleMania 40 preview. And it is my birthday. Your birthday. The big seven five, right? No, five seven. What are you? Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. The big mm-hmm. fifty-eight. So we're gonna. You want to make sure you're there for that. We're going to yeah. have a fun time. Talk and, about who we think. And I will be in. coming off of anesthesia. So that may be that may be a fun episode because who's taking y'all? We're going to do a we're going to do a Dave. We're going to do a Dave Miller this is your life. We're going to talk to the goose <laughs> that attacked him. There's going to be all kinds of good guests. Somebody from the sportatorium that sat in that corner. <laughs> hey, we never know. But uh, the funny thing is, is that they say, what are you going to do for your birthday? I said, well, I'm off. They go, are you going to take off? You're going to take off work for your birthday. And I'm like, well, this year I am because I'm going to have a colonoscopy. So yeah, we need to get some. Uh, so getting got- knocked out and having your butt played with is a lot different at 58 than it was at 28. You know who my dream <laughs> guest on this show is? My dream guest is the bitch that Pond Water hit in the head with the tuna can. If we could have her <laughs> on as a dream. <laughs> Oh, I would pop so hard for that. I'd be proud if she could appear on our show because if she had access to a computer that she didn't sell for crack, that would be progress. That means that she defeated. That means that she bet addiction. She, she, that means that she she beat her demons. You know what? Demons, that might be, be that might that be program. my contribution to Ram as I do what <laughs> embedded where I go in with these you know characters of Dave's story and interview them. That would be fantastic. Oh. We could interview the, the, the bitch that got hit with the tuna can. We could interview. I mean, my God, there's all kinds of people in Dave's past. That'd be a fun. That'd be fun. That's right. That's right. <laughs> what? Uh, so we have your birthday. And then what else we got? Why don't we got some great cuts coming up in April? We do. I'm sorry. Well, we I just, <laughs> well, I didn't know if you want to say their names. I'm sorry. I don't have any problem saying their names. You just can't see them. <laughs> Here we go. Efren says that once you get a colonoscopy every five to seven days. So <laughs> you're actually behind right? schedule, today, according to <laughs> Well, somebody said, why would you want to get a colonoscopy on your birthday? And I said, because I like to potty. <laughs> hey, Robin Quivers of the Howard Stern Show, she gets coffee enemas. So if you want to step your game up. Put some coffee up there, see what happens, Dave. <laughs> this is taking a dark turn. It has. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Tuesday, April 23rd, we're going to have the CWF heavyweight champion, kind of wrestling out of Florida, out of Pensacola, Florida. Um, Simon Phillips is going to join us on the show. Then... On the following week from the from uh, from the CWF, we're going to have the Manimal, Caden Marks. Like it mm, on our show. Manimal. The following, did I skip somebody? 
I think that's what they called Dollar Bill Dave over there at FFP, the Manimal. Oh, I missed. That's I missed um, on the on the on the May second. We're going to have the, um, from CWF, Justin Flo. Oh, I like it. And um, and then we're going to finish up on the fourteenth with CWF with their promoter Ben Rowe. Uh, so we're going to do kind of like we did with MPX building up uh -huh. to destiny. We're going to uh -huh. do the same thing with, um, with, with, um, with the CWF. They're going to come on and talk about, I think they're a little cool little promotion. Uh, the promoter is a veteran and I think that's a big part of the, the promotion itself. So I think that's pretty cool and uh, can't wait to hear from all of them, see what they got going on. Yeah, when is he going to be? He should come on next week for your birthday. Tim, I'm going to ask him. Um, it's hard with AEW with AEW um, talent with the with with people that are under contract. They have to have permission yeah. to appear on podcasts. It's just a so, little talking wrestling show. <laughs> I would love to. I would love to have him on. Um, I've had another AEW talent tell me they would love to come on. It's the, the problem is getting it cleared. Mm hmm. And, uh, but no, I would really love to have Lance on, especially because how much I think of him. And I mean, I wouldn't, it wouldn't hyper power. It wouldn't hyperbole. I mean, I'm the great, the great things I've been blessed with in wrestling, just being able to participate, the friends I've made, the, the things that I've got to do, the positions that I've been put in are because of, because of, and I call him Lance Hoyt because of Lance, um, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it, it, they just, that, that conversation we had and, and I, it's just, I think the world of the guy, I'd love to have him on. And so hopefully we could, you know, it's, it's definitely something that I, I, I will ask him about. And I just haven't got around to it because I know, I know with AEW that it's not a possibility right now. Right. Right. All right. Um, but you know what is a possibility? Uh, I think a belt commercial would be a possibility. Yeah, it's possible for you to order a wrestling belt, throw it over your shoulder, <laughs> and act like a badass. Big time belts. Big time belts, baby. Big time belts is doing it. How about this piece? I and I kind of like dig this. One. I kind of dig this. Um, I mean, the 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 the. the, the I really the wish he wouldn't have made a replica of this belt, this, this layout, because my friend Ron created a belt like that, and mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's there's really no variation to it, but it's a cool belt. Um, I love that the um, Atlas holding up the world. That he's got a wrestler holding the globes up. Yeah. I that like that is too. from that is from the world class tag team belts. Yeah, the the world class tag team belts had that on their side plates, and of course the grapplers. Mm -hmm. I love that faux that faux uh, croc backing. Um, yeah, I want to say that is yellow leather, but it could be lime green. I don't know. It is. It's yellow. It's gold. We mentioned gold. that. I, we mentioned my. Color Yellow lines. or lime green. Okay. Oh, he's doing I, it. I <laughs> well, you get corrected. You get corrected when you're confident. Sometimes, like, I love that yellow. And then tip like it's lime, it's neon green. Okay. So, yeah. It's gonna be a show on the Patreon. Is they're gonna show me they're gonna show me color flashcards and see how many I can we'll get. get. Will Dave get it right? The color. Dude, they were playing. We were playing Phase Ten one night, and the red and the green cards looked the same to me. Sure. And I was on a run. I'm like, bam, 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 bam. And then they're all I'm like, "What in the hell is wrong with him?" Because those are not the same color. <laughs> <laughs> Does Dave not know the rules to this? I mean, is throwing down whatever. I mean, I oh, was so funny. I, I he mean, was so proud of it. He, he I even was it. with it. Like, <laughs> well, what do you do, I Dave? Like, behind everybody was getting down to a couple right. cards, and then I just emptied the stack. <laughs> But and what do you do? Do you have to mark the call? Like, how do you well, no, play? What I have to do is I have to find that one person that we play with that's not a total asshole <laughs> and will tell me if the colors are the same. And that person is not named Kathy. <laughs> no, it's not. 
<laughs> oh my god, that's great. Tempe well, and her tag team that. partner Carolyn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's Carolyn a heel too. The hounds of hell. <laughs> I could see that, Lalo. If you're in competition, to hell with your color blindness, right? Oh no. <laughs> Try to figure it out. <laughs> you didn't pick me as a partner, so I ain't helping. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I'm so, sorry. And now this is a new. This is something that um that, that Big Time Belts is doing. He's um doing these cast um these replicas of these cast belts, the old cast belts like you see behind me, mm-hmm. like the, the the like you see behind me here. Oh, that's cool. This yeah. is the Texas Tag Team Belt. He didn't make this one. I'm just. But he's doing them now. He's a, he has the ability to do that style of belt. Um, how about this? Oh, oh, how cute! Wedding, wedding champions. Wedding champions. Is this yes. what Heather's talking about by chance? An indie wrestler in my area got a belt made by them for his wedding. I wonder if that's well, what she might be well, talking about. That's be- super cool, though. Eppie, we're going to get you and Dave a wedding champion. But I, I mean, yeah. they got their picture on there. Oh, that's cool. the guy. Look at you. I love yeah. it. I mean, it's, it's it's wonderful. I never. We talked about all the things you can do with these belts. I never thought about that. There's something new. And he said they're going to sign it. Have people sign it like it's the guest book. Oh, it's the guest book. That's I freaking cool. Love it. Okay, now if I ever got married, which isn't happening. I would have to do that now. That's a freaking fantastic idea. Me and Tepper are going to get them at 20 years. How, how long do I we have? I just decided. <laughs> if she lets long, me stay. If she lets how, me stay for 20 years, then. That's what we're going to do. How long we got till we got 20 years in? So uh, seven more years. Okay. Yeah, that's when she'll. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to work, but how about 15? No. <laughs> That's when Teppy will remarry him and tell him that they're going on a honeymoon and take him to the old person home. Yeah, two, two, we, we, get, we get to December of thirty-one. We'll we'll get we'll get us some bells. I like it. Hey so, back to zero. Oh God, <laughs> our poor Chad. We're gonna uh, and then our side plates are gonna be like the Ghostbuster circle with the slash, uh-huh. and we'll and we'll put our X's. <laughs> we'll put our X's on the side plates with the. And oh, that I... bitch with the tuna can, she'll go on the side. There you go. Put a oh, tuna can on the tip. <laughs> I'm All sure right. that's oh yes. Ooh, that's hey, a... here like we go with the belt. Mississippi Sea Wolves that, that have a have a partnership with Global Championship. I mean with Gulf Gulf Coast Wrestling. Uh I actually got to hold this 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 beautiful custom belt. So impressed with the pictures, and then when I got to hold it in person. The craftsmanship, Muhammad Zubair is doing some excellent work. The Las Vegas champion, he got he got his belt. Our good friend, Tim Robbins. Tim Robinson yeah. right there in the chat with us tonight. Had his belt dreams come true. He's on his third one now. He's got the Dang. bug. He's got the bug. I really like that belt. He's What's embraced, this? he's embraced the pond water philosophy is yeah. they'll get over it. What's Tim's coming for one, your seventy six belt. Come on, Tim, get it. <laughs> what What did Tim get? I know this one. What's the second one? Did he get tag team belts? He ain't got tag team belts yet. Um, first one is the he got the the heavyweight, and then he's got the cruiserweight. Cruiserweight. Okay. He's got a cruiserweight belt coming, and or a, no, actually, it's a junior heavyweight. Tim did it oh, right. Okay. He got a junior heavyweight. And that, that one right there is just really clean and simple and and beautiful. Beautiful. I like it on the white. I do like it Me on the too. white. Um, there's a close up of it. It's really nice. The Manchester Player of the Week. Yeah, come on. He's, there. he's strutting ass around campus with a big time belt on his shoulder. Let's go, Panthers. The eight one four tag team grand champions. That thing Look at huge. that. Uh, again, we have the faux the faux croc backing. Just a unique style. It's definitely a unique front plate. And then the masterpiece, the masterpiece, the PCW Palmetto Championship Wrestling Heavyweight Championship belt, which I'm told the AWA belt is going to take the take the is going to take the crown from him on being being the 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 Zubair's masterpiece. But right now, that's what it is. 
go over to facebook.com, join big, uh, search big time belts, join the group, reach out. We will make your championship dreams come true. High quality, low prices. And we want to thank them for sponsoring. Be sure to tell them that you heard about it here. He didn't realize that the commercials were doing anything. I asked him about it and he goes, and I said, and then he goes, and he said, no, nobody ever mentions the commercial. And I said, well, what about Tim? He goes, oh, people tell me about you all the time. And I'm like, well, they're hearing about it on the commercial. So make sure yeah. that he knows where you came from. You should Big be like, I'm not, I'm not that famous. Uh, they hear it from the show. <laughs> <laughs> so thank y'all for supporting pod. Yes. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. To, uh, big time belts. I, we always tarry in the chat talking about that last one. That thing is just creme de la creme. Uh, the color schemes that he put on that thing, the raised, you know, palmetto and everything, just beautiful. Love it. I think it's beautiful. I, I don't know what colors they are. I know that well, I described them. I described them as bold. I'll tell you what they are is it's a it's kind of a darker blue and then like that bright light blue and then like a coral orangish it's more orange uh light orange color to go it's different go on. it's a hundred percent different fantastic. they very much complement each you know the colors complement yeah. but i'm now i'm really excited to see the awa belt if it's supposed to be you know even a more of a masterpiece yes. than that i cannot wait when or when do you think we'll get a chance to see it in a couple months i don't think it'd like, be long i mean he's been working he, on he it. told me he was he told me that they got that they, they were working on the artwork so awesome we can't Hopefully wait soon. to see it does that mean vladimir is going to be carrying around that title who's our champion eventually right oh no um sorry i didn't mean to catch you off guard you know what I'm thinking? After the uh, Cincinnati Bengals win the Super Bowl this year, I'm going to have him make me a Bengals belt that has tiger stripe on the inside. Oh. Brimstone, Brimstone is Brimstone is the current champion. We talked about it last week. Um, me and Brimstone were knocked out, and Camacho interfered, interfer interfered and took out Chris Paps. That's right. But, yeah, so Brim Brimstone is the daddy. current champion. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Have we said it all and said it enough, Dave? What else we got? Just our socials, going over I my think. checklist. We've, we've I talked we've about our it. friends' podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Where they can find you all. We did our podcast. We did that. Yeah. I remember that part. Hey, well, <laughs> while we're thinking about everybody else's, though, let's go over to pwdpod.com. That's our YouTube we channel. Go. So a lot of y'all are watching this right now on Facebook, and we appreciate that. A lot of y'all are watching that right now on Twitter. We appreciate that to our ex, if you will. Some of y'all are watching it on Twitch. There's a few of y'all watching it on YouTube. Keep watching it wherever you watch it. But please, venture over to YouTube. Click the subscribe button. Help us out. Hit the bell. Do it. And keep watching it on Facebook. Keep watching it wherever you're watching it. And we appreciate you watching it. But, Definitely. I mean, do, do us a favor. Click the subscribe button. Uh, and, and and we appreciate that. Um, we're almost you know, at right now. Four hundred is our next goal. Mm -hmm. I mean, a thousand is ultimately where we need to be. Uh, we definitely are getting the views. We just need y'all to click that button. Help us out. I'm begging you. I, I'm not too proud to beg. Amy's too proud to beg. Justin's not too proud to beg. Well, I'm definitely not too proud to do anything. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Not completely straight. Get that at uh, jumpinthepond.com. <laughs> so, uh, but be with us next week. We're going to do our WrestleMania. We're going to do our WrestleMania 40 predictions. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be a party atmosphere. It's not going to be uh -huh. just. It's not just going to be going down the li the list. And we we're gonna we're probably going to have some. We're going to do a little wagering maybe. Gonna have I'm some party beads. We're going to have some surprise guests, some run-ins probably. Um, we're going to have a good time. It's going to be different. We're going to. It's a birthday party. And I'm going to be on spring break, so I'm definitely going to be part of Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to, me and Amy are going to be live from Club La Vila next week. <laughs> and Dave will have to go back to work in the morning. And I got to go work next day, so <laughs> we won't. So we're not going to go any later than this. We'll be, we'll be done in under two hours. I, All right. I will stay up very late. We're excited anymore, for next week. I don't have to get up. WrestleMania week is upon us, everyone.
Dun, 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 dun. Um, okay, Dave, we're going home. Let's do it. All right. I, I, we've said it all. We've said enough. We do want to say once again that we are praying for those in Baltimore and the families of those lost. And um, for, of course, Pond Water Dave and for Miss Amy Vaughn. My name is Justin Davis saying please take care of yourself and each other. So long, everyone. <laughs>